All right, so now I want to talk to you about proportions. And obviously these vary uh, quite a bit, but there's certain rules and certain uh, guides that you can look at. Uh, so what I'm going to do is start with drawing a straight line down the screen here and establishing a top and bottom. Uh, now you can be very specific about this. You can design something that is laid out really well and, and perfect separations and all that. I don't find that to be necessary. It's up to you if you want to do that. What I generally will do, uh, you know, just to work a little bit faster, is I'll roughly find a center, something like that. And, you know, maybe that's a little, uh, maybe a little high, something like that. And, and maybe you're seeing it differently, right? I'm guessing here. But then I'll find center again on each one of these marks, or in between this mark and this mark. And then I'll do that one more time. Okay, and I'm sure it's less than perfect, but again, it gives me just a basic guide. Uh, and I, I normally don't need over eight heads tall, so I'm gonna I'm gonna show you the uh, heads tall method and using uh, heads to basically define your character's proportions. I find that to be the best way to go about it. So what I mean by head is I'll start with just an oval, and so there's certain things that you can look for. So basically, two heads down to a um, you know, standard male character, we'll say eight heads tall male character, uh, really uh, general proportions are a little closer to seven and a half. But again, it's going to vary. It's going to vary if the person is, you know, worked on their body and built up bigger muscle mass, it's, it, you know, changes their uh, their look uh, relationship to the head. Not really the head height, I guess it's the skeletal structure, but uh, the overall look width wise, it will change. We'll put it that way. So, for instance, somebody can beef up their shoulders and become wider and things like that. Uh, their lats, you know, just really beef themselves up. But generally, uh, you can go three heads wide, roundabout, and then two heads down is going to be the placement of the nipples. Now, keep in mind, this isn't the bottom of the, the pectoralis uh, major. That's going to come lower. So, I'll just kind of throw in this... Uh, little you know stretched out u shape right there for now and then if we go three heads down we're going to get the navel four heads uh, four heads down we're going to get about the bottom of the pelvis but i generally go a little bit lower than that so it's really the pelvis region or the halfway point of the the mass of the body um so something like that and then the upper legs you know, you could come down here and say, well, this, this, uh, what would that be? Six heads down, uh, mark would be the, the bottom of the, the knee. So I'll put a four or an outward bend and then I'll come back and then a back bend. And then the feet, you know, occupy a pretty low amount of space. Now I will a lot of times go past that bottom mark, uh, by a little bit and sometimes a lot. Again, I want you to look at this like I'm going to show you the basic units of measurements to find certain things. Again, two heads down for the nipples, three heads down for the navel, four heads down for the midline of the body. Upper leg is, is taller than the lower leg, so you're going to bring that past the, um, uh, the six heads down by a bit. Uh, and then the rest is the lower leg and the, the foot. Uh, again, and for the eight heads representation. So let me show you how... I would fill some of this in and just get a get an idea how this is going. So, so now that I have these placeholders, I can say, well, and actually I've got the pectoralis too wide and maybe even the hips, but we'll see here. So I'm going to find the collarbones, clavicles right here. Get this little dimple right there, right, the indent. The sternum is going to be here. We'll get in that rib cage shape that we've been using. You see, I did jump past that and place the uh, the pectoralis, but that's because we already had an idea where the nipples were, so it gave us that next uh, closest marking point, marker, or reference point. And so now we'll work down to the waist. So you got the obliques here. You've got the pelvis here, where we can draw in our floating underwear. Something like that. 
opening for the legs, I typically will use a more squared off angular version. Uh, and we're going to be getting into um, talking more about the benefits of using angles for placement and then also defining certain characteristics. So again, the shoulders, the, the deltoids, are going to be roughly the width of three heads. I'm going to go a little bit wider on this character. You see that's more like uh, probably closer to four if I was to move these over and add another or three and a half. And again, I don't want you to think of these things as too uh, too specific, but they're, they're more as guides, you know, to get you in the, the realm and the region of what you need. So uh, we're going to use the lightning bolt again for the arm. So here's that initial start to the deltoid. comes back like this and attaches with a bit of a slope right there. So we've got downward, upward bend, you know, tracing the bicep here, upward, tracing the forearm. We're going to use that little lightning bolt there. The wrist comes down to about the lower portion of the pelvis, uh, and then you can attach the hand to that. I'll just use a little kind of gestural version of a hand for now. So forward bend, or in, inward bend, a bend to the medial side of the body. Just remember anytime I say medial, it's towards the middle of the body, and lateral towards the outside. Okay, struggled with that <laughs> gesture of the hand for some reason. Okay, so then uh, the leg here. So outward bend. Actually, I'm a little too far inward compared to the other. So I've kind of sloped in with even the arm probably, so I'll have to do some corrections here. Okay, so something like that. So there, we've got our established lengths and everything's kind of in place. And again, all of this gives us lots of, of good reference points. Now, there's other things to think about. Generally, the uh, elbows are right about to the bottom of the rib cage. So that's another reference point. But you have to be careful sometimes with some of this way of thinking because since we are drawing uh, uh, an imaginative character, uh, and even when you're working from reference, there, there's a chance that you're going to maneuver something. And one thing, if it gets moved, can affect the next and the next. The main point is that you, you, you use enough of the landmarks to kind of bring it all together. And then you use your ability of um, observation and reasoning and, and, and just adjusting things uh, so that you can steadily get closer and closer to your desired end result. All right, so now we've got our three main masses in place. We've got the rhythms of the arms and legs. Uh, so now what we can do is start to drop in the, um, the cylinders uh, just to build up some volume. And But what I like to do here is, is basically not uh, get rid of the previous step. So I want to think of these techniques as working in unison. So I'm going to drop in the cylinders. And I'm just going to lightly sketch those over the top. I'm also tapering them in. Uh, you don't have to do that. It's kind of combining an, uh, the next step, really, but I think it's helpful to do. feels more realistic to do that. And I'm probably going to bring the knees up a little bit. So I feel like these are just too low right here. So I'm going to bring those up. So I guess it would be about six heads down. But again, this is going to change because if we're working off a seven and a half heads tall model, uh, then that's a little bit different, right? And you know, likewise, if you go to a six heads tall model or uh, some super heroic version of a character that's eight or nine heads tall. Uh, so yeah, you just play around with these different proportions and you have to move these around accordingly. Remember too that the outside of the legs are gonna be, um, have more of a bend comparably than the inside of the legs. As I place these cylinders, I still want to kind of think about that just so that I uh, place them in, in a bit of the right direction, the right slope, the right angle. 
because again, I'm thinking of the fact that the inside of the legs almost resemble a bit of a triangle and the outside of the legs resemble more of um, two um, recurring bends. Longer bend here and a shorter bend here. And we'll get into that more as we place the anatomy, but something to think about. And then I think it's helpful to draw the feet as basically two shapes. So one like this and another one like this. And also make sure to draw the feet pointed outward a little bit. You know, it's very rare that anybody stands with their feet pointing directly towards the camera or towards the viewer, just in an awkward looking pose. So practice uh, getting that little bit of bend outwards. And likewise with the knee, that will coincide. All right, so there we go. We've got some basic volumes and primitives placed. We've got our rhythms. We have our general proportions. And what we'll probably do is even change the head a little bit. I feel like the head is too small overall. Now, obviously that changes things, right? So if we go with the eight head stall model and at the end we change the head, uh, what does that say? It, you know, it, it changed it from an eight head stall model to maybe a seven and a half. But I, I do find this to be something that that I will do in my work. I, again, I, I don't want you to think of this approach as being too rigid of a, of a process. Um, I think overall it's just best that you utilize this to get everything working uh, and then you, you adjust uh, accordingly based on what you see. So let's do this. We'll stop here. We'll head over to the next lesson and continue refining this. We'll now start to place some anatomy and talk more about that. So with that, Let's move forward.